website generates millions of images a day. And according to a recent study, just one image can consume as much energy as charging your phone. That's right. Just like most things, AI has a carbon footprint. We definitely shouldn't um, kind of view AI as a costless thing. I think it's very easy to view this as abstract thing on your computer that doesn't have any impact, but it, but it does. Where do those emissions come from? Well, around the world, most AI is hosted in data centers like this one. That sound you're hearing, those are fans being used to keep the hardware cool as these computers are sucking up a lot of electricity and generating a lot of heat. Running AI is running any other computer program. You have an input, you want an output, it's going to do lots and lots of operations. And doing lots of operations for one answer means that there's a lot of energy and electricity. According to the International Energy Agency, data centers and transmission networks account for 1% of global energy-related emissions. That's almost as much as the aviation industry. And AI is a quickly growing piece of that. But it's not all bad. It's also an important tool in the climate fight. AI is being used in all sorts of ways to address climate action, from helping us better forecast solar and wind on the power grid, to helping better optimize heating and cooling systems in buildings. German-based company Dryad is building AI-trained sensors for ultra-early wildfire detection. The company has deployed 20,000 worldwide. These are solar-powered gas sensors. So behind this membrane here is a gas sensor that is um, um, sensitive to hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and volatile organic compounds. So it actually is like an electronic nose um, that can actually smell a fire. And we can um, detect fires as small as a campfire, uh, even before there is an open flame uh, sometimes, as long as the gas molecules are hitting the sensor. So we can protect about the size of a football field. You can see AI in action in some potato fields in PEI. Meet the AgriScout robot. It may look like a rover that belongs on Mars, but it's actually helping potato farmers using cameras to look for potential disease in their crop. AI is becoming more widely adopted across society and the types of models that we're using are also changing. Some of the models are getting larger and larger, and we really have to be on the lookout for the growth in AI's emissions footprint. One thing that is challenging in getting a hold of that is that there isn't enough transparency. AI will continue to contribute to greenhouse gas emissions until we move away from fossil fuels. But experts say we have to think about how we use it and its consequences.